All right, Shalom Chabrim. I have set the stage for you guys. I said to you that they are smuggling in these different refugees into the United States uh, through our southern border. And so I figured I'd go ahead and kind of put the pieces in place here. And I also want to go address this PSYOP operation, uh, especially from a email I got from a friend of mine. I'll show you though, so you can see that I'm not just saying this. I want you to be sure that you realize that I am not making it up. I'm actually telling you what I'm saying here is true. A uh, good friend of mine, he has an insider. I cannot reveal his name, so I've had to block out that information there. November 8th, two days ago, we were played. And I know those that uh, love Donald Trump, and I even have said myself, he is the lesser of two evils, maybe not realize how they're playing us. This is a psychological warfare on the American people. They're giving Donald Trump to us to say, okay, you had your vote, but they're playing us. And they're using it to their advantage because they want to bring the nation down. They're wanting the nation to riot. They want the nation to rise up and to have a civil war. In Russian media, yesterday after the election, they said this is the beginning of a civil war in America that will go on for years to come. And that's the danger of this. So yes, we are being played. And as much as I know my Christian brothers and sisters would say, you know, God is giving us a man that will help put the nation back in order. But you can tell that there is a plan by the elite for just the opposite. And I think that's a play that they're doing on us. Now, just to show you some different news clips here. This was CNN, the Clinton News Network, right? Even Russia says that. They call it the Clinton News Network. That was on RT the other day. ISIS on Europe's doorstep. How uh, terror is infiltrating in, my, in the migrant route, okay? The call was simple, but it changed what is already dark business meant for one smuggler. Abu Walid, which is not the guy's real name, knew his uh, uh, caller to be a devout man, a member of ISIS, and his request was chilling. Could he ship 25 of his people from Libya to Europe on a small boat for $40,000? Okay, so we know for a fact they're shipping in ISIS members in amongst all these different refugees. But it's more interesting. Watch what happens here. Dangerous migrant smuggling, according to Reuters. All right, smuggling routes flourish in lawless Libya. A lot of people think these are Libyans, but you're going to find out that's not really the case. After a flurry of boats' departures that sent hundreds of migrants to their deaths in the Mediterranean, survivors told police they had been kept for weeks in one meal a day holding houses for, uh, near the Libyan shore. Then they boarded the rubber or wooden vessels, but only those to uh, those co-opted to run or drive the boats were given life jackets according to the accounts given to the Italian police. Well, it looks like a lot of these guys have got life jackets on, but I, yeah, clearly they don't all have it, and so many of them die in, in the process here. But while all this is happening, there's a bigger smuggling operation going on. I want you to look here at uh, Q-U-O-R-A, Quora. The question is asked, is America accepting refugees from Libya? Now, their best answer comes from this guy right here, Sami um, Tahouni, and he's right in what he says. Libyans are not seeking refuge. It is people who are foreign to Libya using the country as a place to launch from, a, uh, fr from as a way of entering Europe. Libya has open borders as it does not have the resources to police the huge areas. Many people from sub-Sahara sub and other places enter Libya in order to get to Libya's coastal cities and attempt to travel illegally. Is the U.S. taking Libyan refugees? No. Is it taking people who are in Libya illegally or are looking to travel as a refugee to the U.S. as a result of the trouble in their, own, in their home country? Yes. So the U.S. is also taking in the refugees as well, and they are from the African nations there. Many of these, though, are ISIS militants, as we see in the CNN report. The man was trying to get 25 of his people smuggled in. 
And of course, they just keep smuggling them in. But you say, well, Steve, how do you know they get into the U.S.? So they come in legally in some cases, but also, as we've seen in the report right here on International Business Times, back on November 19, 2015, is ISIS entering U.S. through Mexico. Amid Islamic State fears, Border Patrol captures Afghan Pakistani men being smuggled into the country. Six men from Afghanistan and Pakistan were captured in Arizona as part of a group of Mexicans attempting to smuggle themselves into the United States and were detained by U.S. Border Patrol in Sonothia, Arizona. All right? It goes on. It talks about how they're doing all this. But the problem is, even like Donald Trump said in his own speeches there, they have been told, the border police have been told to stand down. We did a special broadcast on this, I don't know, two years ago. And we really went into there how they had even taken away the uh, certain guns from the Border Patrol and told them and only give them like one little clip of bullets for their regular handgun. They can't even use their rifles or nothing anymore. They're not allowed to stop the refugee crisis coming in. Why? Now, many Mexican people, no doubt, using the opportunity to come in as well for a better life. I understand that. It's a hard life in Mexico. I realize that. I'm not against these people. But what the Obama administration has done is allowed those that they have smuggled in through the southern border, in this case Pakistanis and, and Afghan, but also from even other refugees from African countries, the ISIS members are also being smuggled in through these southern borders. When they come in, they blend in easier into the population because you know, we have a lot of African-American people in America, so it's not hard to blend in. The only difference is you could tell by their speech, etc. This is where the violence comes from. That's why I say most African-American people will not go this type of route. They will not violently protest. I, I know that, like in the case of uh, the, the different uh, black people that have been killed by law enforcement and stuff, yes, they have gotten together. There has been riots as a result. But a lot of that has been funded by George Soros as well under the Black Lives Matter. When it's not so much that it's Black Lives Matter is doing it, they bring in, again, the agitators from these foreign countries that are willing to do the evil deeds that are going on. So I wanted to share that with you. But let's take a moment and let's look at it. As the friend of mine that wrote me and says we've been played, he refers to this video right here, which is very clearly what Yana says about as well. And I wanted you to be able to hear this so that you will know as well that we're being played. Now this is, this guy right here is, it's, um, that's Peter Better, I believe, uh, is the one that does, John Doe is the name of the guy that puts the website up. He's an ex-KGB defector, a communist uh, propaganda expert, predicts Obama's game plan almost 30 years ago. 30 years ago. So it's a 30 year old video, but watch what he discusses here. Just in a short clip here, I wanna share this with you every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students. Without the Okay, now what you have to understand in this, what he's saying here, Peter is actually talking about the United States is going to a communistic regime. A fascist communistic regime is what we're going to see here in the United States. And they have been planning this for years. Let me, let me tell you, I just want to play a few, few, few clips and then I'll put this also in the links here for you so you can watch this for yourself. I mean, it's remarkable uh, what this man says here because he knew that this has been planning for for decades what they're doing right now watch this here two more clips i want to play you does not tolerate these people uh, they obviously they will join the links of dissenters dissidents 
uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, Say that. Here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, that. See, the future America is going to be a Marxist-Leninist nation. You have to understand, remember what I've shared with you. The Pope of Rome, they orchestrated the collapse of the Tsars and they brought in Lenin and Stalin, who were Jesuit-trained men, to bring in the anti, the 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 communist, or not the communist, but the um, anti-religious background, the atheistic uh, thinking. Now, that was to to crush the Eastern Orthodox religions. It was to crush any other kind of religions in the nation. And slowly but surely, they only allowed the Roman Catholic religion in there. They're going to do the same in the United States. There is too many, even though there are, we see like the groups of Kenneth Copeland and, and, and uh, Rick Warren and these groups here that are joining in with the Pope of Rome, there's still too many believers of Yeshua that won't go the way of the Vatican. So they're going to put you under a communistic regime. Listen to what he says here. Neil Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be the greatest shock for them, of course. Okay, so he's letting you know it's going to be the greatest shock for you. They're preparing the stage. Okay, they're preparing the stage. Let me take you up to the six-minute mark here. So, basically, America is stuck with, with demoralization, and unless... Even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, no, normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation. Uh, it's, two to five what, what years. What matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense, an economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may violent change of power structure? I lost indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. He will go to Moscow to kiss the bottoms of, of new generation of Soviet assassins, never mind. He will create false illusions that the uh, situation is under control. Situation is not under control. Situation is disgustingly out of control. Most of the American politicians meet. Hmm. That's just to give you guys a little example of what we're talking about here. Peter, who is a former um, uh, Soviet uh, Union KGB defector that came into the United States. Very, very, very serious uh, situation here. Um, it's actually, I'm sorry, not Peter. Uh, uh, his name was Yuri uh, Bezmenov uh, was actually his name. I will post 
the link uh, to this video in the comment section for you so you can see this for yourself. It's just very odd how that this um, information that he says here uh, has come to light in this day that we're living in now and it is becoming a reality. But what's interesting is how he states in here, it takes 15 to 30 years to re-educate the generation. They've been re-educating generations now for the past 30 years so that they would riot against the nation. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching.